Oopsie. That would be an understatement. The three of us peered down at the slim, twisted, bloodied body of a previously pretty woman. A once painstakingly maintained and expensively sculpted face was now a mass of broken skin and bones. Long, chipped salmon pink nails on the right hand appeared to be gripping a jagged rock, while those on the left were twined in tendrils of seaweed. Perfect, plump lips that many women would give their eye teeth for were retracted in a macabre smile, while formerly merry eyes the color of the ocean stared unseeingly upward. A grim, gruesome death mask had replaced a vibrant visage. The gentle breeze that had been blowing all day was quickly evolving into offshore winds and cracking surf, while the September sky was growing dark with giant, cumulonimbus clouds. Thunder and lightning weren't far off. It had started out like any Hawaiian Wednesday morning, sun-drenched and dazzling. A vivid rainbow had curved over Ala Moana Beach Park as the bus transported people to work and school and tourists to Pearl Harbor and the Aloha Stadium swap meet. As they did every day, trolleys and shuttles traveled to various hotel pickup points in Hilo Hatties while cabs and cars were navigated to planned destinations. Who'd have expected our first official paying private investigation case to take such a drastic detour to the brutal murder of the young wife of our wealthy philanthropist client? We were at the Peering Place, a rocky cove situated near the Helona blowhole that was as beautiful as it was dangerous. The small sandy beach within the cove was well known as The Beach in the 1953 movie From Here to Eternity. At the moment, though, it didn't exude the romance it had when Bert and Deborah had graced the sands. We'd only had to demonstrate she was a cheating spouse who possessed a secret that could prove of value to her husband and help dissolve a four-year marriage. All that had been required? Surveying the woman, taking photos as necessary, and delivering nightly reports. Easy peasy. Not... What we'd unearthed in the preceding days extended to the sordid world of drugs and gambling, two ugly and dangerous addictions that could drag you under and far like the Molokai Express, which was the crossing of the Kaivi Channel from volcano-formed Molokai, Hawaii's fifth-largest island, and possessed exceptionally strong currents. If the vice didn't batter you, the enabler, the human component was there to ensure you remained dependent, paid up, and or stayed high, and never screwed him or her. Man, she must have really pissed someone off. Big time. I peered across the darkening Pacific and reflected on that which had brought us to Hawaii, a desire to open our own P.I. agency. But the bodies sprawled across rough, wave-soaked rocks begged one crucial question. What did a meteorologist, actress, and script-writing assistant know about detecting? So what if they'd played amateur sleuths several months ago during a murder-filled week at an eerie Connecticut mansion? That didn't grant them the expertise or street smarts to manage a bona fide case. But maybe the more imperative question at the moment was, how are they going to explain a simple undercover case gone terribly wrong? Chapter 1 4 p.m. and the sky was the color of black sambuca. Winds were collecting momentum, sounding like wailing pirate ghosts flitting amid Louisiana bayous, while rain had started to descend like July 4th fireworks over San Diego Bay. The sidewalks several floors below the high-rise condo building were empty, save for two lanky kids, a scooter-bound lady, and a big burly man hurrying and scurrying to drier, safer places. Exterior lighting, obscured by the downpour, was providing minimal illumination. As a result, it was barely possible to see across the boulevard into the park and marina. Boats would be bobbing like little yellow plastic duckies in a child's bath and waves surging like crowds of pubescent girls at a Justin Bieber autograph signing.